Hello everyone, Mininth here. In this video, I'll be discussing what Steam Input's dots per 360 setting is and how to calibrate it. The first question that may come to mind is, what even are dots? In a nutshell, dots are a way to measure mouse movement. Know how desktop mice often have their sensors labeled as something like 1000 dots per inch? That means over the course of physically moving the mouse an inch, the mouse sends 1000 dots to the PC. The PC then translates that to mouse movement, which the game uses for aiming. The next question follows, what is the dots per 360 setting? The dots per 360 setting is basically asking a question, how many dots does it take to turn the in-game camera through a full 360 degree turn? Every game will have a different value as an answer. Ideally, you would find that game's value and put it into Steam Input's dots per 360 setting. This setting is saved per action set, and is shared with anything within that action set that uses it. You might wonder, why would you care to do this? Consider the desktop mouse again. A lot of people might contextualize their mouse sensitivity as centimeters per 360. Basically, how far do they have to move their mouse to do a 360 in-game? They can then balance the game's mouse sensitivity and their mouse's dots per inch setting to get their desired centimeters per 360. But we aren't using a desktop mouse in Steam Input. We are using controllers and are mapping various inputs on them to mouse movement. If we want to get a particular result, we have to not only define what those results should be, but then use alternative means to achieve them. In older Steam input modes that just had a single sensitivity slider with it being represented as a percentage, there was a set amount of dots that the slider then multiplied based on that percent. It's rather abstract, which makes it difficult to use to achieve a desired result accurately. In newer Steam input modes that have the dots per 360 slider, all that's really happened is the set amount of dots has been exposed to the end users to mess with. Then the second sensitivity slider acts as a multiplier on that and is tailored to the input and how it's being mapped. Basically, the dots per 360 setting accounts for the end game sensitivity. That allows the second sensitivity slider to be balanced against a known value in order to achieve the desired result. Both sliders contribute to the final output or overall sensitivity. Increasing or decreasing either will increase or decrease overall sensitivity respectively. Because of that, if you really wanted to, you could ignore one slider and adjust the other until things feel right to you. However, several things in Steam Input rely on the dots per 360 setting being dialed in. As of the time of this video, those currently are Flick stick, which uses stick rotation as a relative heading control, almost like a top-down twin stick shooter, but only in first-person mode. Gyro to mouse, which maps gyro angles to mouse movement in what the community calls a real-world sensitivity. And reset camera horizon, which is a binding that sends enough movement to move the camera fully down and then halfway back up again to vertically recenter the camera. And this list could grow in the future with rumblings of a potential trackpad rework for those of us who enjoy that playstyle. Because of all of the above, it is well worth dialing it in so that everything that uses the dots per 360 setting works harmoniously. It will even allow you to get a consistent response from those modes across all of your games. That means the next part is obvious. How do you dial in the dots per 360 setting? A huge disclaimer. Before calibrating, you must prepare the game settings. Some of this will be things you generally prefer, such as the in-game sensitivity and field of view, but any mouse smoothing or acceleration in the game must be disabled for this to work correctly. Once the game is prepped, calibrating the dots per 360 value can actually be done in a matter of seconds. How, you might ask? This is thanks to mousesensitivity.com. This website is amazing, but not foolproof, and I'll touch on that a little later. What it does is basically act as a calculator to figure out what values to use for various sensitivity settings, and it can be used for our needs to dial in the dots per 360 setting. Scroll down to the calculator settings block and set the units drop down to counts. Counts are basically dots. Then scroll down to the input block. Select the game you are playing. If it's not listed, you can always request the owner of the site to add it. In the meantime, you'll have to use another method to dial in the dots per 360 setting. I'll cover that method a little later in the video. Set the sensitivity to the in-game sensitivity you are using and likewise set the field of view to the end game field of view you are using. Then scroll down a bit to the calculations block. 
Next to the 360 degree distance, you'll see a number labeled counts. As long as it is 32,000 or less, as 32,000 is the max steam input can go, congratulations, that's the dots per 360 value. Put it into steam input and you are good to go. Note, I would recommend rounding to the nearest whole number as steam cannot accept anything other than whole numbers. However, as I said, this website isn't foolproof. When I first tried this with Deep Rock Galactic, it actually gave me a value that was different than the value I found with Flickstick. To make a long story short, in the input block for the game, there is a location dropdown. It turns out that in-game versus config file does matter for some games, and somehow my Deep Rock Galactic's config file was different than expected. In that case, I had to navigate to the config file and copy and paste the values over. Kind of annoying, but once I did that, it actually did give me the value I found with Flickstick. You can learn more about how to use the calculator in the game info box, where you'll occasionally see notes about things you may want to change. Doing so can give you a more correct value. And if you become an expert at using this website, you can do all sorts of stuff to really fine tune your experience. Despite the concession that it isn't foolproof, I still absolutely recommend learning how to use this website, at least at the basic level shown in this video. At best, you can get a bang on value within seconds and don't have to worry about calibrating any further. At worst, it will still very likely give you a value that is a much better starting place than the default value for those of you who do not wish to hunt down the config file. But let's say mousesensitivity.com has given you a value and you want to confirm it, or it needs adjusting, or the website didn't have the game you are playing. How do you dial in the dots per 360 setting from there? Enter Flickstick. While this isn't a Flickstick video, this input behavior can be used to dial in the dots per 360 slider pretty well. Set your input, like right stick, or in my case right trackpad, to Flickstick and get into its settings. Set the Flickstick sensitivity to 0%. This disables the sweep portion of Flickstick, so it only does flicks. Set the snap angle to 90 degrees. This is important so you know every input is precise. Without it, every input you make is prone to human error. Leave everything else at the default. Side note, if you intend to actually use Flickstick in-game, you can change the settings back to what you prefer after calibrating. Now switch to the game. The goal is to send the game what should be 360 degrees of rotation to see how well the settings match the game. To do this, look at a distinct unmoving point of reference and push your choice of left or right four times, or down two times. Because the angle is set to snap to 90 degrees, all of that multiplied should equal 360 degrees. You want it to make it back to that reference point exactly once. If the camera undershoots, you need to increase the dots per 360, and if it overshoots, you have to decrease it. An overshoot when pressing left will wind up to the left of the reference point, and an undershoot will be to the right of it. An overshoot when pressing right will wind up to the right of the reference point, and an undershoot will be to the left of it. While the goal of pressing down is to do a 180, it has to move the camera in a direction to do so. Valve chose left. This means it follows the same logic as pressing left when judging if it over or under shot. Then you repeat the process, each time changing the dots per 360 value by a smaller amount until you hone in on the dots per 360 value that works for that game. This process of adjusting, testing, observing, readjusting, and repeating can take several minutes, but it does work reliably provided the game settings were prepared beforehand, so do not get discouraged. I hope this video helped you learn what the dots per 360 setting is and how to dial it in. I also hope it dispelled any fears over it being too complicated or not worth it. Until next time, learn a new skill.